In Spring Boot, there's three different ways to do dependency injection. There's constructor injection, there's setter injection. There's my favorite, which is field injection. But if you're working on a team, if you're working on a project of any serious size, from here on in, I forbid you to use anything other than constructor injection. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. I have to be one of the world's biggest spring and spring boot advocates. And this is one of the questions that I'm constantly getting, which is, what should I use? Setter injection, constructor injection, or field injection? Well, there's a lot of drawbacks to field and setter injection. There's a lot of benefits to constructor injection. Going over the three different types and then showing you some very compelling reasons to stick with constructor injection is exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, if you've been watching my spring and IOC and dependency injection tutorials, and I hope you have, you know that in order to do dependency injection, you need at least three things. You need an inversion of control container like spring. I got that on the left hand side here. And then you need a managed bean by spring and then that managed bean has to have a dependency and I've got those on the right hand side here I got a meal that's got a drink right you can't have a meal without a drink a meal is dependent on the drink class here and the drink class is a method that says consume when we consume a drink it says gulp and in the meal class we actually have a little method called quench thirst that calls the drink so we've got a, a nice little environment here you can also see that drink class is decorated with that auto wired annotation this is field injection and if we actually run this class when we pull the uh, meal bean out of the spring container and call the quench thirst method while well, that quench thirst method will call the drink the drink will be auto wired in injected into the code we'll have a real instance there no null pointer exceptions for us that'll call the drinks consume method and it'll say hey the di'd class the dependency injected class says gulp so I'm from Missouri. I want to see this run. Let's say run as a Java application and boom. When this runs with, what do we do? Field injection. Well, that field gets created. And when we call on that quench thirst method, it says, hey, the dependency injected class says gulp. Now, I did put some output, some print lines in the default constructor, the non-default constructor as well for the meal class, NDF there, that stands for non-default constructor, I'm trying to fit everything on the screen here so it's easy to read. Um, and I also put a, a printout in the center so that we can see when those methods get called. Now, you'll notice here in this code, when we ask the inversion of control container for an instance of the meal class, that's over on line 13 on the left there, Behind the scenes, what happens is Spring calls the default constructor of the meal class, creates an instance of the meal class, then it initializes that field, that drink class, that drink instance, it's got the auto-wired annotation on it, and then finally when it calls the meal.quenchthirst method, well, the dependency injected class, the drink class, says gulp. So it's all working there, but null. We love nulls. One of the big problems of not using constructor injection is the fact that inside of your constructor, the objects may be null because they're not initialized until after the constructor runs. It's a big difference between using constructor injection. When you do constructor injection, you're given a real tangible life-size instance of the object that's getting dependent it gets passed right into the method so you can work with it you can manipulate it if in that meal method there we were to try and say something like uh, drink dot quench thirst or think drink dot consume well, what do you think would happen I don't have to tell you boom no pointer exception right so Let's avoid null pointer exceptions and get back to the advice that I gave you just a little bit, a little while ago, which was don't use field level annotations. Don't use constructor level annotations. Use your setters. Uh, what did I say? No, you don't use setters. Use constructors. Sorry, getting a little tongue tied here. Okay, I'm moving the auto wired annotation onto that 
set drink annotation there. There's the set drink method there. Now, I'm also going to delete this meal method, and I'm going to throw that drink.consume method down here because I want to see that null pointer exception again. I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why are you wasting my time by showing this null pointer exception again? We know that the setter is called after the constructor, and, and therefore this is going to be null, right? So I know, but I'm just, I'm just petulant like that. I'm just, I'm not a good person. So I'm going to run this just to get that null pointer exception, just to Where's the null pointer exception? Okay, we got rid of the default constructor here. Previously, when we had the default constructor and it ran, the drink was null. But here, the drink isn't null. And if we actually look at this, let's see if I can move that over just a little bit. Look at what's happening here. It says that when we tried to gain access to this resort, re resource, the non-default constructor got called, okay? But when the non-default constructor got called, it already had a drink instance. How did it get a drink instance if the setter wasn't called? Right? Like we actually see DI class says gulp before the setter is even invoked here. This... <laughs> It's a little bit of a problem, right? So this is reason number two. Your setter might not get called when you think it's going to get called. Right? Like, what's the point of even doing setter injection here if when the IOC container calls the, the constructor here that it's going to auto-wire it in anyway? So if you've got one constructor, the spring container is going to uh, run that when it creates the instance. And, well, if it's a managed bean, well, as you can see, it's going to auto inject anyway. So that's another reason why <laughs> you might not want to do setter injection because, well, spring is going to do auto wiring on a constructor for you anyways. Now there's just special conditions where that happens, but I mean, it's something to take note of. You know, another thing I would say is sometimes you just don't need a setter. We need to get out of this idea that every time we have an instance variable, we need a setter and getter for it. Stop doing that, okay? Uh, we shouldn't just be exposing ourselves to the world. I mean, just not exposing yourself is just good advice to give people. Uh, we shouldn't be doing it with our Java beans. So another reason why I don't like setter injection is just because I don't like being compelled by the framework or being compelled by some rules in the project that we have to add setters. That's not a good strategy. Another big problem with setter injection, your fields can't be final. What else? Uh, can't set final variables. You might not need a setter. The constructor might end up getting a null object. <sighs> might not get called. Another thing that I might add is when you're using constructor injection, Spring can identify circular dependencies. You're not going to run into that on small projects, but boy, on large projects, you can, and that can become a real serious problem in your code and something that's really difficult to, to identify. So I would say uh, that's another reason to use constructors. Okay, They can help you identify at compile time your circular dependencies. Now, here's one of the last reasons why um, I think you should avoid uh, anything but constructor injection. I'm going to throw some impossible code here. And this is my last reason. This last reason is avoiding the impossible code. Now, let me see if my paste works in there. Here is some impossible code. Okay, this code could not run in a regular Java class because, well, in this case, the drink is private. There's no constructor to initialize the drink. There's no setter that allows you to set the property of the drink and mm, well, it's private. So you couldn't initialize that property directly. So this is impossible code. Okay? We can never run the quench thirst method drink.consume because we have made it impossible. There is no 
way, unless there was some freakish, crazy magic that the Spring Framework did, this code could never run because that drink property could never be initialized, which is why if I try and run this code, Boom, it runs. Spring makes the impossible possible. But I don't like the impossible being possible in my code. I want to know exactly what's possible. I want to test it. I want to know why my tests are working. I want to know why my tests are failed. I don't all of a sudden want to find out that private variables with no setters and no constructor access can finally get initialized and run through my code. Now, by the way, this is the magic of Spring behind the scenes. This is doing um, reflection using the reflection API to initialize these variables. It's all super amazing and super cool, but you know, don't do this. Don't do this type of field injection. Do the setter injection. It is much better. Now, by the way, one thing I would recommend, I've got a tutorial on spring and dependency injection describing exactly what dependency injection is. One of my big beefs with people is they describe dependency injection incorrectly. They say dependency injection is just passing an argument to a method or initializing variables outside of your code. It couldn't be more wrong. And those people are way off the mark. Um, they often say, you know, oh, it's using setters or constructors. One of the cool things about this code that proves all of those people completely and totally wrong is the fact that this actually does dependency injection without setters, without constructors, and without even a public field. So um, if you haven't checked out that tutorial, that uh, YouTube video, please go and check it out. Anyways, this is my advice to you. Okay, use constructors. It is uh, a nice standard to have on your team. It avoids problems like uh, null objects in constructors. Um, it avoids some of the mystery that happens with reflection when you do field injection. You can avoid circular dependencies in your code. You're relieved from having to put a setter into every class when you might not need them. Remember, your framework should never impact your code, right? Um, you want to keep that away from your code as much as possible. In fact, even the auto wired annotation in there kind of rubs me the wrong way. Use spring config. Um, and of course, then finally, you can't set final variables if you're using setter injection or field injection. And you really need to be marking your, your fields as final if they're not mutable. Okay, there you go. Those are the reasons why you should always be using constructor injection. If you disagree, um, throw some down in the comments. I did say earlier that I actually like field injection. I think it makes it really, really neat. And on small projects, and if you're using a, a Mojito that makes it a bit easier to inject and test beans like that, you know, I don't hate it, but personally, I would always push towards a spring config file anyways, and just get the component and auto wired annotations out of your Java bean. You shouldn't have references to the spring framework in your Java bean anyways. Okay. I'm done. That's it. That's enough of my rant. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I am the editor in chief over at the serverside.com. So head over there, check out all the tutorials we've got on spring, on spring boot, Java, Jakarta, Git, GitHub, Scrum Agile, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter. Send me a message uh, over on X, as the young kids call it, and uh, and say hi. Let me know if uh, you learned something from this. And uh, I've also got a couple of books back there. So Pickering is Springfield, all about the Simpsons. I've got um, uh, What is Webster? It doesn't sell too much anymore. Uh, there is Hibernate Made Easy, which uh, people tended to like. And then you'll notice uh, Darcy DeClute's Scrum Master Certification Guide. Uh, a number of people are reading that, scoring 100% on the Scrum Master and Product Owner Certification exam. So if you're agile and working with Scrum and you want to advance your career, I highly uh, recommend that book. I did some of the final edits on it. So um, I'm proud of the work that, uh, that was put into that. And then finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube? <laughs>